I'm going to hit you right out the gate with a very reputable study published in a very reputable journal that talks about how intermittent fasting actually preserves muscle. You're not going to lose muscle when you're intermittent fasting. You see, so many people think that as soon as they break away from eating every two or three hours, or as soon as they break away from eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner for that matter, that they're going to start losing all this muscle. They think that they're going to just have crazy amounts of cortisol that elevate, and they're going to get fat and lose all their muscle. Well, let me give you some science to debunk that right out the gate, and then I'll explain what's happening when you're fasting and why everyone should really give this a shot. So this study was published in the Journal of Translational Medicine, and it took a look at 34 resistance-trained men, okay? And it broke them into two different groups. It broke them into an intermittent fasting group and a standard group. The intermittent fasting group ate during an eight-hour window. They fasted for 16 hours, and they ate during an eight-hour window for a period of eight weeks, okay? Then the other group ate traditionally. They ate breakfast at 8 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and dinner at 8 p.m. So very traditional. Both groups ate the exact same things in the exact same quantities. So this way we knew exactly what was going on. Well, what they found at the end of eight weeks was that the overall muscle density, the muscle mass, and the fat-free mass, so lean body mass in general, between both groups stayed the exact same. No change at all. But one thing did change. The group that did the 16-8 intermittent fasting ended up having a significant loss in body fat. In fact, the difference between the two groups was phenomenal. 16.8% overall fat loss in the fasting group versus 2.4% in the non-fasting group. They ate the same thing, they ate the same quantities, they did the same thing. Neither group lost any muscle, but the fasting group lost significantly more fat. That has me sold right then and there. But let's talk about the why, because we have to dig deeper. And if we truly want to understand things, we always have to ask the question why. Hey, by the way, if you haven't already, why haven't you subscribed? Go ahead and click that button right now and make sure that you see all of my videos that I'm always posting and make sure you turn on that little bell so you can know whenever I go live or whenever I post a new video. So the first why is simply growth hormone. You see, most people think of growth hormone as just this exogenous thing that bodybuilders take that's gonna give them big muscles and a big forehead. There's a lot more to it than that. You see, growth hormone is something that's very natural to our body and very natural to our recovery. And whenever we're fasting, we have pretty significant increases in growth hormone. And what growth hormone ultimately ends up doing for us in this case is it ends up stunting amino acid breakdown. You see, amino acids are what make up proteins, and our muscles have a lot of amino acids. So what ends up happening is ordinarily, if you were to go without eating or if you were to not have growth hormone, your body would start to break down amino acids and use it for energy. It's a simple process known as gluconeogenesis, and it's very healthy, and it always occurs at some degree. But when we're fasting, we have so much in the way of growth hormone that is naturally being secreted, it blunts a lot of that process, meaning the body has to turn to other measures rather than just breaking down our muscle. It's pretty darn amazing. Okay, then we move into something known as beta-hydroxybutyrate. Those that are ketosis fans know all about beta-hydroxybutyrate. BHB is the main ketone body that the liver produces through a period of fasting. So whenever we're not eating for an extended period of time, our liver starts to produce this beta-hydroxybutyrate. And it does something very specific with one very specific amino acid. That amino acid is our friend leucine. Leucine is one of the most anabolic amino acids that's out there. It's a huge, huge staple and a huge building block for overall muscle build and all of that. When it comes down to building any kind of structure in the body, leucine is pivotal. So if we end up having leucine being broken down, being oxidized, we don't have it there to support muscle. And that can cause a big problem. So when we look at what beta-hydroxybutyrate does, is it stops the oxidation of leucine. It stops the wasting of leucine. Ordinarily, we have a certain percentage of leucine that just gets wasted. Beta-hydroxybutyrate, when we're fasting, allows that leucine to do its job. Now, it doesn't mean you want to just be consuming straight leucine. That can cause an insulin spike, it can cause a whole different world of hurt. But we do want the body to naturally preserve what we have in the way of leucine. Then we get into the world of autophagy. Now, this is a huge, huge favorite of mine. And it's a huge favorite of mine to talk about because a lot of people think that autophagy just means that your body's recycling and wasting muscle. Autophagy is not that at all. Autophagy is a very powerful component and a huge benefit of fasting, and it's when the body takes old cells and it recycles them into energy. It takes old, dead, and decrepit cells and uses them for food. It does this instead of breaking down your muscle tissue. So what if I told you that you had old, useless cells that were floating around in your body? And what if I told you that by trying out fasting, your body can take those old, useless cells 
and eat them instead of you having to eat food. And it can eat them instead of having to break down your muscle for food. That's the beauty of autophagy. Now, there's other genetic things that happen when it comes down to autophagy as well. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Cell Metabolism that took a look at autophagy and the absence of autophagy. They wanted to see what would happen overall if autophagy was limited or didn't exist. And what they found is whenever there was a lack of autophagy occurring, we ended up with some pretty significant cell mutations. Now, it may have something to do with the fact that as cells start to turn a little bit more decrepit and they start to change and then they reproduce when they're in a bad condition, they could create some more ugly cells. We don't really know, but the fact is it caused these genetic mutations in cells when we didn't have natural, healthy autophagy occurring. So it changed the mitochondria. And what ended up happening is it ended up changing what's called the myofiber breakdown. So with the myofiber being different, it made it so that muscle broke down a lot faster meaning that without naturally occurring autophagy, muscle wasting and atrophy occurred at an alarming rate. So when we're fasting, we're encouraging a lot more autophagy, way more than if we're not fasting. We always have a little bit going on to some degree, but when we're fasting, it's cranked up like crazy. So in this case, we're truly doing the opposite of this gene mutation that causes this myofiber deficiency, this myofiber issue. So without this myofiber issue, our muscle is able to maintain itself a lot better. So anyhow, this should clear up a lot of the confusion surrounding this. I talk to way too many people that think that they're going to waste away when they're fasting. They're nervous, and I totally understand, but it's a new era, and I think a new era of education and science is starting to lend itself to people really having success with this kind of diet and having success with not only losing body fat, but also gaining the confidence and gaining the mental and cognitive function that they need to be the best possible person in so many aspects of their lives. So if you have ideas for future videos when it comes down to fasting, when it comes down to ketosis, or lifestyle in general, I want to hear them. Put them in the comment section below and let me know. And you can always head on over to thomasdelauer.com too and sign up for my email newsletter so you can learn a little bit more about other things that are going on in this world as well. I'll see you soon.